This is Achnacroish on the island of Lismore, where the ferry comes in from Oban. In Gaelic, Lismore means the Great Garden because it is a fertile island built on the limestone bedrock. It's a lovely walk along the shoreline below the low-lying cliffs and with the mountains of the mainland standing out so sharply today. The monument is in memory of a man who drowned off here while sailing in 1891. The words are rather weathered now to read on this monument, but it says that it's in the memory of Waverley Arthur Cameron of the Oban Times, drowned on the 4th of June 1891 by the foundering of a sailing boat off this spot. This sheltered crossroads of water-based transportation routes was a significant place from earliest times with many bronze and Iron Age sites. By 100 AD, two substantial brocks and many fortified houses had been built. Geography again determined Lismore as a centre for 6th century Christian missionary work. Maluag's Bay and the Cathedral Church dedicated to the saint are reminders of his importance. In the 13th century, the ruling MacDougalls were the patrons of the substantial cathedral, as well as two castles on Lismore's western coastline. Changes in land use, begun in the 18th century, accelerated in the 19th. These included changes in land ownership, agricultural improvements, crofter and cotter clearances, and industrial developments in the form of lime burning. Coastal built kilns, for easy access to shipping, mainly produced lime for building purposes. The 1841 census shows 1,148 souls with a full range of tradespeople. The population thereafter declined steadily to around a hundred in the 1940s. This is Lismore Heritage Centre, which as well as a museum and a reconstructed croft house has a cafe which sells very good coffee and cake. The Croft House was reconstructed in 2002 using traditional building methods and skills which are still practised on the island. The almost one metre deep walls are stone, as is the floor. The Argyle green oak beams and Lockerbur birch sarking support upside down Lismore turf and a thatch of reeds of which there is a good supply in the island's three locks. Although named David's daughter Isabel's house, the little cottage would have had various Cotar inhabitants over the years. In the 1891 census, the, the occupants were Christina McCall, 55, Anne McCall, 53, her sister, and John McIntyre, 64, her brother-in-law. But this house is not in a well-favoured position and must have been a bleak and windy place to live in winter. Water had to be carried uphill from a spring 50 metres distant. Fuel, wood or coal, was carried uphill too. There was some inferior peat on this moor, but that had run out by the 1890s. Landless tenants, they may have kept a few hens or laboured for a neighbouring farmer if they were fit to do so. So the cottage provides a fascinating insight into life at the turn of the 19th century and into the 20th century. In 562 AD, Moluag and Columba 
both natives of Ireland, arrived in the west coast of Scotland looking for a suitable centre from which they might spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Each realised the suitability of the island for this purpose and sought to be the first to land. The story is told that when Moluag saw that his rival's coracle would reach the shores first, he cut off one of his fingers and throwing it up onto the shingle as he shouted, My flesh and blood have first possession of the island and I bless it in the name of the Lord. Columba was not well pleased. Indeed, his reaction could hardly have been described as saintly. But God did bless the island and allowed it to be used as the centre of evangelism for much of the west and north of Scotland. Little more is known about Moluag or the teaching centres that he set up on Lismore, but it is thought that he travelled widely and probably also went to Iceland for a spell. There is no trace of the earliest Christian buildings on the island. The present church is part of the cathedral which was completed in the 14th century. The original building consisted of a choir, a nave and a square tower at the west end. The tower and nave have long since been destroyed, but the foundations of these parts can be seen quite clearly from the ground to the west of the church. The cathedral was built of local limestone and windstone rubble, with dressings of sandstone from Ard Tornish. Following the Reformation, the church fell into disrepair. In 1749, the floor of the choir was raised by two feet and the walls reduced by nine feet and a new roof installed. Later, a vestibule and a new door were added at the front and a vestry at the back to complete the church as it stands today. This is St Moluag's chair where the saint sat and meditated. Unfortunately, no one can get to it nowadays because it's surrounded by barbed wire. Saint Moluag is said to have landed on this stretch of coast when he came over from Ireland. This is called Port Moluag, but there is nothing to see now. All over the island are these stony outcrops, which could be part of a prehistoric settlement, or it could be just natural rock formation. We're not sure. This is Tirafor Brock. This is definitely man-made. Tirafor Brock was built around 2,000 years ago during the Iron Age, when the important prehistoric community of Lismore was at its height. The Brock dominated the surrounding seaways, standing up to 15 metres tall, with walls over 3 metres thick at the base. The centre held a domestic living area, and the characteristic passageway between the outer walls can still be seen in places. Tirifuir was built during the Roman occupation of Britain and a Roman enamelled brooch was found in the foundation layer. This is thought to have been a votive deposit or gift to the gods, deliberately placed when building began. Brocks often had long periods of occupation and this is supported by archaeological finds at Tirifuir. These include an 8th century highly decorative pin, a rectangular building nearby of Norse type, and a Norse pin and boat rivets, showing it was still occupied until the 11th or 12th century. Thereafter, the seat of power shifted to the clan MacDougall, castles on the west side of the island, and the brock fell into ruin.